I'm reading from Matthew 9 verse 35. And it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And that's the one reality that hasn't changed, whether it's pre-COVID, mid-COVID, post-COVID. It is the truth still that the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is ready, guys. And so we have come to a season of harvesting. It's not a season that Heinrich has declared. It's not a season that some prophet has declared. It's not a season that someone is, is making a movie about. It is a season that Jesus has declared. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, the harvest is plentiful. It has always been ready. The challenge is on the laborers, but and we believe that God has called us to, number one, raise up those laborers, but also to be those laborers ourselves as well. And so thank you for being co-laborers with us. Thank you for joining us as we are joining Jesus. Look at what verse 35 says. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages. And so some of us are in cities and some of us are in villages. We are trusting the Holy Spirit for this next season of our lives, our history as a church family. We are 30 years next year. Amen. Come on, you can give a shout just there where you are. 30 years, we are going to go big in our celebration. And when we look back at this last 30 years, we see Jesus' faithfulness. We see his provision. We see how we've grown. We see how he's brought us through the fire. We see how he has brought healing into our hearts, how he's restored trust and confidence, and how he is releasing new faith over us as well. 30 years, it's significant, right? Jesus was more or less 30 years old when he started his ministry. So in a very real sense, guys, we are literally just getting started. The, 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 the time of impact for us, I believe, now lies ahead of us. When Jesus entered into his ministry life, he entered after having received a affirmation and a confirmation from his father after he was baptized, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I believe that God has come to affirm and to confirm our identity as to who we are. We are sons and daughters of God on a mission, and He has placed us in this field in which to labor. This field that is called shofar. There are many other fields as well. This field called shofar is the one in which God has given us, and He's walking ahead of us. And I believe that because God has spoken a release and a confirmation of our identity over us, we are ready, guys. We are ready to follow Jesus now. And I believe that we are entering a time when we will see and we will hear Jesus calling us into more cities and into more villages in South Africa and the rest of Africa and into the nations of the world. Jesus is already going, preaching, teaching, ministering through his Holy Spirit in these villages and in these cities. He just wants us to partner with him. So I'm, I am filled with so much expectation in my heart to see us walk in a new wave and a new anointing of teaching, preaching, healing, and above all, just receiving compassion. It says that Jesus, as he was doing all of those things, as he was teaching, as he was preaching, as he was healing sicknesses and diseases, in the midst of all of those ministry activities, his heart was filled with compassion for the crowds. And it's, 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 it's fascinating. He was busy moving around, moving around, but he was not too busy to receive a fresh impartation of compassion even. As we enter into this, this next phase of our lives, as we are intentional around our calling to make disciples, intentional around our calling to raise up leaders, intentional around our calling to plant churches, we, we're shaping everything we do, the, the way we spend our, our, our money, the way that we build our buildings and make our disciples around God's calling for us to impact every possible village and city we can think of. 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether that is through the radio, whether that is through YouTube, whether that is through sending mission teams to go and plant churches, whether it is to send godly teachers or farmers into those areas, whatever it is, guys, now is the time to lay hold of our inheritance. God has called us to possess the land, right? And I want to read this, 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 this verse for you as I, as, I, as I close off for us. Um, Caleb, let me just jump one, one chapter. Joshua, Joshua and Caleb together. So Joshua 13 verse 1, it says, Now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much of the land still to be possessed. All right, so this is about five years into them having conquered the land already, um, fighting battles, chasing guys out of the city, slaying giants. The Lord says to him, you are advanced in years, but there's still much of the land to be possessed. Um, we have advanced in years, 30 years. Yeah? It's 30 years that many of us have been in ministry almost almost for that, um, for that long. Some of us have been in ministry a short a time. But the Lord is saying to us, whether you've been in ministry for a long time or a short time, irrespective of how much you have seen God do, there's still much more to be done. There's still much of the land still to be possessed, not for us, not for Shofar, not for us to go and plant our flag somewhere and, and compare churches to other church planting families. No, it's much of the land to be possessed for the kingdom of God. And I believe that God is calling us once again in these next 30 years, these next 50 years, these next 100 years to live our lives with this passionate commitment that Caleb and Joshua had. These two spies, these guys who have been faithful, going through the wilderness, going through difficult times with the people of God, until the people of God are ready to possess the land, until the unbelief has died off, until the murmuring has stopped, and the guys are ready. They're ready to possess the land. A new generation has been raised up. A new generation of laborers, guys, I'm telling you, has been raised up by the Lord. They are ready. Sons and daughters of God are ready to possess the land. And they need Joshua's and they need Caleb's to walk ahead of them, not in fear, not in criticism, not in negativity, not in hopelessness, but in genuine, humble, broken faith before the Lord. And this is what Caleb says to Joshua. And he says, in Joshua 14 verse 10, Now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. <laughs> He's kept us alive these last 30 years. Amen. He's kept us alive this last year. Even though many of us, we went through tough times and maybe even lost some friends or family. He has kept us alive. Why are you alive? You're alive to possess the land. He has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day. Here we are in September 2021. He says, 85 years old, put your age in there. 46 years old for me, 33 for you, 59 for some of you, whatever. Here you are after all of these years. And he says in verse 11, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you had heard in that day how the Anakim were there and the cities were great and fortified. And it may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out just as the Lord has said, the Lord is with us. And I'm asking God for the mountains of the nations. I'm asking God for the mountains of the generations. Saints, may the strength of Caleb be upon us to say I'm as strong today as I was when I first heard, as I first believed, when I first sensed God's word coming in me. We are just going to go from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory because of God being with us. Caleb took out that mountainous city with the giants. He took the biggest city, the most fortified city in the strength of the Lord. And he left behind a legacy for the generations to come. I believe God has called us to take the mountains, trust him again for those places that look impossible. With God, all things are possible. You have been brought forth. I've been brought forth for a time such as this. And as we celebrate the 30 years that have been, let's also look forward to the times that are coming for us to be able to say, we are well able because our God is with us. The Lord bless you. Let me pray for us quickly. Father, thank you for these couple of 
minutes that we could be together and just reflect and look back and see how faithful you have been. We thank you, Lord, for the disciples we could make, the leaders we could raise up, the churches we could plant, the fellowship groups that have grown, and all these wonderful things that you have done in our midst. But God, now, as we celebrate what you have done, as we do so, Father, into next year, I pray for a supernatural release of faith for us to understand there's much of the land still to be possessed, and you have kept us alive for this reason, to go forth, to preach, to teach, to heal, to have compassion on the crowds around us, and to be laborers, Lord, in your harvest field. May your kingdom come, may your will be done in us and through us, here in our hearts, here in our churches, as it is being done in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Looking forward to seeing you at the summit. Lord bless you. Thank you for your time. Have an amazing day, an incredible end of the year, and hope to see you guys soon. Blessings. Bye-bye. All across this land, in the hearts of men, in the orphan child, in our government, in our herd. Come